Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about Omkens Hydraulic Stuffer, the proper usage and maintenance on these stuffers. So the first thing that you want to see is the stuffer is going to come as shown in this picture like this. Uh, it's provided with a box, get your user manual and then you get three plastic spouts, two levers for the top lid and one tool to remove the piston. First thing you're going to do is install these handles. These handles is what tightens the lid down. So they just literally turn in and get secured. Once it's secured, the way to use it is to properly press on the handle clockwise to tighten. And what it does is it makes sure that no product gets released from this area here. To loosen, counterclockwise, right, and open the lid. That's it. The unit actually comes pre-installed with the piston inside with um, the bolt in its place. And what you want to do is uh, push the lever away from the unit. Let it rise right to the top. procedure is going to show how to properly remove the piston, reinstall it, what to do and what not to do. So this piston actually comes pre-installed from the manufacturer. Have it raised right to the top. Once it reaches the top like this, what you're going to do is get your tool that's provided. There's two ends. This removes the actual bolt and this removes the piston and lifts it up to bring it to the sink to be washed. So what you're going to do is get the tool remove the actual bolt, right? It comes pre-lubricated with food grade grease. Put it back. And then you can see the hydraulic shaft in there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press the knee lever in towards the unit. It's gonna separate from the hydraulic shaft. Count to five. Stop the knee lever by pressing with your hand because it'll be stuck into place when lowering it. Then put the tool back in with the threaded part down, turn it until it reaches maybe a quarter of the thread shown left on the tool, so about there. And then you're going to want to raise the hydraulic shaft back up. And what we'll do is actually lift the piston out of the, the housing. Then you would lift it. Keep in mind, like this. This plate here is pretty uh, severely heavy. If you do not, um, if you do drop this, what happens is this part here, this this welded part here, actually cracks, and it could damage not only the piston but the internal housing of this. Okay, of the actual uh, hydraulic stuffer. The stuffer on the hydraulic shaft, you can see there's two pieces. Um, this is a new nut that goes on top of the hydraulic shaft and it's threaded, which the piston lock bolt gets lodged into. So what happens is if you don't tighten the bolt properly down, it gets pressed up onto the lid and it damages these threads. So instead of having to replace the whole hydraulic shaft, this just needs to be replaced as well as this is threaded. So it's two piece. So when you bring it to the sink, you gently place it down without preventing it from dropping. If it's too heavy, ask someone that's a little stronger to help you lift it. Remove the tool. By holding the piston on one hand and then remove the tool. Now that it's removed, you're gonna wanna remove the gasket, but you don't wanna damage it. You need a tool that has a little bit of a flat edge to pry in here. To remove the gasket without damaging it, right? Because there'll be meat lodged in this, in this crevice. So you just remove the gasket, wash it thoroughly, wash the inner part here, and then reinstall it. That's it. Inside here, that there might be some moisture or some residue of some meat, and you want to clean that, just press the knee lever in so the hydraulic shaft goes all the way down.
Once you press in, it locks the knee lever into place. And once it reaches the bottom, it automatically brings it back to the center with the motor disengaged. Once you start washing the inner bowl, any water and soap will get fed through this hole, which is your drain. So make sure that the stuffer is located underneath the floor drain. Now, uh, once the bowl is clean, everything is ready to be put back, you would have to manually raise the hydraulic shaft into place. That's at the top when you hear the motor trying to give and it can't go anymore. And now the best way to actually install this is without the gasket to make it easier to put the piston. So now I'll show you. So now you got the piston, it's cleaned, gasket's cleaned. Make sure that this gasket's on, on the piston. All right? See how it's wobbling that's because I have this too high. So gently just turn this and it'll start feeding itself back in onto the, the shaft, the hydraulic shaft itself. Okay, so see that there's a gap here and here, right? What you're gonna do is now, when you get the bolt to put back into place, this is what's gonna secure it together, but this is a crucial part because if it's installed incorrectly, then um, it can have major damages, which I'll explain. So you're gonna tighten it, hand tight, snug, right? You're gonna bring down the piston, then you're gonna stop. You're gonna bring it up again, see how it lifted up a little bit? So now if you did production like this, it would actually press up against the lid here. It would damage the threads on this bolt, as well as the lid and potentially maybe damage the sides of the inner housing inside. So always bring the piston down and bring it back up to ensure that this is flush. So now I'm gonna to proceed to tighten it. Now I feel it's snug. And again, you do one more time to ensure that if I go right to the top, it's not gonna protrude and hit the top of the lid here. So now the piston is secure and ready for my next process. Now you bring it all the way down and again the knee lever will then swing back into the manual uh, mode and basically disengage your motor and you may proceed to start producing sausage. So next, you want to put the lid gasket into place, put your product inside, close the lid, secure and secure, and then you may proceed. Over here, you can see the plus and minus side. This is your speed control. So this will allow you to see how fast the meat will be coming out of the spout. Uh, the only way to actually know is to keep adjusting it and manually playing with it. The gauge is for the pressure that's internal of the chamber. So once it's filled with meat, you, you'll see the pressure actually increase. So this is just an example. It increases. And then um, when there's no meat left, uh, basically when you're at the top, you'll hear this, the motor engage like that. That means that you reach the top. Then you must redo the process again, fill up with meat and continue. So when you get uh, your hydraulic stuffer, um, the knee levers are adjustable and they come shipped vertically because of uh, obviously shipping purposes. And you want to adjust it to your knee. This is meant for your knee and not your hand. You could use it for your hand to lower it if you'd like or stop the machine. Um, but you want to adjust it for your knee. So to do this, you would have to get internal of the actual hydraulic stuffer. And now I'm going to show you two things inside here. First, you're gonna to wanna to remove all the screws on the side panel. So now I'm on the last screw here. Remove the cover. And you can see multiple things inside here. 
What you want to pay attention to are these three Allen screws that are here, located on the side of the unit. And I'm gonna talk about the reservoir here for the oil, for the hydraulic fluid. And then just some of the components internally. Um, so inside here, you see your contact, your motor, your actually hydraulic shaft assembly, a marker switch that gauges the knee lever to go up or down, and then your reservoir for your oil. But for this part, we're talking about how to adjust the knee lever. 16th Allen's, Allen's wrench. What you're gonna do is you're gonna just loosen these screws here that are in, internal. And then you're able to adjust the knee lever. So once you loosen all three on screws, you can adjust it to the height of your desire and then just retighten it. So what happens is, let's say for example, you come into work and this is loose like this, it should not be loose, it should be tightened. So you have to remove the door on its side and go back in here and just tighten these three screws. So either two things happen, someone lifted this up or dragged the unit by using the, this handle. So two things. So one is aggressively trying to push it to adjust it to a different height which makes it loose or by pulling it. So again, to rectify that issue, just screw in the three pound screws here on the side, which I'll just start to proceed now. And then adjust it to your, the height of your liking and then you may go. Now that the knee lever is secured to my height and my desire, just test to make sure that it automatically swings back to the center position. And when you press in, it locks in. When the piston automatically reaches to the bottom, it will actually disengage the motor and go back into the center. That's it. And then now, I'm gonna talk about the oil reservoir here. Just mind you that once you just use it, there might be some air in there. So just relieve the pressure slightly. Open the cap. Move. Then you're going to get um, like a dipstick to see where the level is. So the oil should be between the min and max level here. If it's above, there's too much, and if it's below, there's too little, right? So the only way to properly know that is to get a dipstick, you would dip it inside. So you'd measure, let's say, half of this, so you want that height. You place it inside, pull it out, and see how much oil is in there. Uh, to refill this, you would have to get a funnel, place the funnel here on its side, and put AW32 hydraulic oil only. Um, there's other viscosity oils that you may use, but it needs to be hydraulic for your hydraulic use only. Uh, typically what we use here is AW32. And then once the oil is topped up, it's in between the max and min lines. You put the cap back on, the door back on. What you do is you put all the screws by hand first sure that it's slotted incorrectly makes it a lot easier to install the door this unit has two options with all models you could either do fixated legs or you could get ones with casters uh, the ones that are fixed you would have to lift the unit from this side and keep in mind that this unit is top heavy so you may want two people you would gradually lift up and then move it to its place or you have the options of installing the casters where you can just guide it to wherever it needs to go. So this concludes our training. Uh, if you have any questions concerned feel free to contact us at 1-800-465-0234 we'll be happy to help.